welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This week we'll have some exercises with the Landsat sensor data. And Landsat is a name of a series of satellites ranging from Landsat 1 to the most recent satellite, Landsat 8. And on board these series of satellites have been a series of sensors. So the early Landsat satellites 1, 2, and 3 had MSS, and then Landsat 4 and 5 had MSS and TM, thematic mapper, and then Landsat 7 had enhanced thematic mapper, and now Landsat 8 has two sensors on board. Okay, so Landsat 8 data is free, Landsat 7 data is free, Landsat 4 and 5 data is currently free. But from 1984 to 1994, Landsat data was privatized. So basically it was uh, operated by a company called EOSAT that had exclusive rights to Landsat data. And the problem was it cost $4,900 per scene. So during that era, there are very few scenes that were acquired. So there's a fairly large gap. It, especially in Alaska for Landsat scenes ranging from 1984 to 1994. Okay, so by today's standards, the sensor on board Landsat 1, 2, and 3, the multispectral scanner was a fairly crude sensor. And it was basically about 80 meter pixel size. And the radiometric resolution was only uh, six bits. So basically pixel values range from zero to 63. And then in 1992 or 1982, with the launch of Landsat 4, we have Landsat Thematic Mapper, which was a much higher spatial, spectral and radiometric resolution. So the pixel size was 30 meter pixels except for the thermal band, which was 120 meter pixels. And we had spectral regions for the blue, green, and red, which would allow us to produce a color image. And then the near infrared, so we could produce color infrared images. And then there were two shortwave infrared bands, band five and band seven. And then band six in Landsat thematic mapper is the thermal region. And then, Landsat 7 with the enhanced thematic mapper had an additional band, which was the panchromatic band. So it had a wide spectral region from 0.5 to 0.9 micrometers, and the pixel size was 15 meter pixels. And Landsat 8 has two sensors on board, OLI, the operational land imager, and that has uh, these bands. So basically we've got coastal aerosol, blue, green, red, near infrared. So now near infrared is band five, and then the shortwave infrared is band six and band seven. And then we have a panchromatic band and then a special narrow band in the mid infrared that senses cirrus clouds. And then we have a thermal infrared sensor that actually has two bands in the thermal spectral region. So ranging from 10, to 13 microns. So this would be the spectral response for band 10 and then the spectral response for band 11. So since we have two thermal channels, we can use a technique called the split window technique to estimate sea surface temperature or land surface temperature. Okay, the Landsat sensors use a scanning mirror and as part of that scanning mirror, there's a scan line corrector. So basically, if we don't have the scan line corrector, this is what our image is going to look like. And the scan line corrector corrects for that orbital motion. So basically, we have a nice um, seamless image. And unfortunately, in Landsat 7 Enhanced Thematic Mapper, the scan line corrector failed. And it failed on May 31st, 2003. So all the data after May 31st, 2003 from Landsat 7 Enhanced Thematic Mapper will have gaps due to that scan line corrector failure. And the gaps tend to be near the edge of each scene. So for example, here's a scene 
from the Arctic tundra in Alaska. This is the largest tundra fire documented in Arctic Alaska, the Anatubic River fire. And if we zoom in near the edge of the scene, you have these data gaps. And you notice those data gaps are right in the Anatubic River fire because it's near the edge of the scene. So any Landsat 7 enhanced thematic map or image that you order after May 31st, 2003 will have this problem. And the problem will be greatest along the edge of the scenes and it will be non-existent near the center of the scene. Okay, this is a cartoon of basically how the Landsat sensors work with a scanning mirror. So we have a scanning mirror an instantaneous field of view, or if you will, a pixel. It's actually a oblong instantaneous field of view. And then from that scanning mirror, we go to spectral filters, and then that's passed to detectors. And then that would be the pixel value for each band. So basically we have spectral filters for each spectral region. So some of the detectors have to be cold so they're the shortwave infrared bands and the thermal bands, and they'll be on a cold focal plane. So for example, with Landsat Enhanced Thematic Mapper or Thematic Mapper, band five and seven are the shortwave infrared detectors, and there's 16 detectors per band. And the thermal band in Landsat Enhanced Thematic Mapper, there's eight detectors for that thermal band, as opposed to what's called the prime focal plane, which are silicon detectors. They would be the detectors for the blue, green, red, and near-infrared bands. And there are um, 16 per band for 30 meter pixels or 32 per band for 15 meter pixels for Landsat 7 Enhanced Thematic Mapper. So here's a cartoon for Landsat 7 Enhanced Thematic Mapper. The prime focal plane, these detectors are silicon detectors, and silicon detectors are sensitive to blue, green, red, and near-infrared spectral regions. And then the cold focal plane, these would be the detectors for the shortwave infrared bands, and then the detectors for the thermal spectral region. So if you remember way back when, in the first week, the longer the wavelength, the less the energy. So our thermal detectors are basically going to be 60 meter pixels and the shorter wavelengths will be 30 meter pixels or our panchromatic band which is a wide spectral region will be 15 meter pixels. So every once in a while you'll get something like this where here's a spectral band I believe it's the red region everything's fine and here we have the shortwave infrared region the same exact um, Landsat scene, it's on a different focal plane and there was some sort of error, so these lines were not processed. So all the bands on the main focal plane, the silicon detectors, blue, green, red, and near infrared, would look like this, and yet the two shortwave infrared bands looked like this because they're on two different focal planes. And that's very rare, but every once in a while you'll see something funky like this where two bands have gaps and all the other bands that are on the prime focal plane have no gaps. Okay, and the spectral response of Landsat 4, 5, and 7 are very similar, which is fortunate so then we can basically go back in time and do basically historical comparisons using Landsat 4 data, Landsat 5 data or Landsat 7 data from the thematic mapper sensor with Landsat 4 and 5 and the enhanced thematic mapper sensor from Landsat 7. So basically we've got blue, green, red, near infrared, shortwave infrared is band 5 and band 7, band 6 is the thermal spectral region, and band 8 is a wide panchromatic band in Enhanced thematic plus, and that would be the 15 meter pixels. And from each pixel value, we can calculate spectral reflectance. So spectral reflectance will range from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. And basically with spectral reflectance, we're adjusting for the sun 
angle, how high it is above the horizon. So we'll do this this week. We'll calculate spectral reflectance using a Landsat 8 OLI spectral data. And we can also calculate from the thermal band radiant temperature. So with thematic mapper or enhanced thematic mapper, it would be band 6. And we'll actually calculate thermal temperature, radiant temperature of an area in the Alaska range using Landsat 8 thermal infrared sensor. And basically it's going to give us the at satellite radiant temperature in degrees Kelvin. And if you remember from basic physics, if we want to convert that to centigrade, we would just take degrees Kelvin minus 273. Okay, so the Landsat satellite passes over every 16 days, and it's trying to basically capture the Earth's surface at about 9.45 in the morning. So it's going to orbit from the northwest, northeast to the southwest to maintain that local time. And then each swath is 185 kilometers in width. And then basically we've got it carved up into snapshots called scenes. And each Landsat scene will be about 170 kilometers north to south. So we have a 16-day repeat cycle. So for example, here's day one, and then here's day two, and then here's day three. So they're not adjacent to each other, but every 16 days you'll have the same exact orbit. And these scenes are in something called a world reference system, and it's path and row. So this would be path 70, and this would be row 15. So this is the Alaska range in this area, and then this is the Yukon River right here. And then this is the Tanana River. So path 69, path 70, path 71. So since we're at a fairly high latitude, we'll have many overlapping paths that we can choose from. So we don't just have one scene that would cover our study area. We could have three or four scenes that would cover our study area at high latitude. Okay, so here's an example of all the scenes that cover Alaska, and you could actually download this as a shapefile from this website, landsatscenefootprints.shp, and you would see that for most places in Alaska, typically we have three scenes that would cover our study area because the paths are overlapping at high latitudes. So here's an example. This is the Tanana River, Fairbanks, uh, Nanana. So, for example, if we wanted uh, Landsat data of Fairbanks, we could get it from the northeast part of this scene, or we could get it from sort of the central part of this scene. So here we've got two areas that overlap, two scenes that overlap that cover Fairbanks. Then we could order and download Landsat sensor data from two USGS websites. So the first one is the Globus website, USGS Global Visualization Viewer. And then the second one would be the USGS Earth Explorer website. So basically we would specify the path and row that we're interested in and then which of the sensor data we're interested in. So typically um, Landsat 7 or Landsat 8 for the modern era, Landsat 4 and 5 thematic mapper for historical data. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you and some website links about the Landsat sensors.